These are some silly but real examples to illustrate the saying, correlation does not imply causation. So following the setup from this chapter in the textbook, there are two populations, I'll say. There's population A and population B, and then we're looking at the distribution, in particular the mean of a particular variable, the same variable, but in these two separate populations. So in the first example here, I'm using the data set named Airfare uh, that's provided through the Wooldridge package. And we're going to consider population A is going to be uh, air, airline routes where the average fare is less than $200 one way. And population B is routes where the average fare is above $200 one way. And then the Y variable here is the distance of the routes measured in miles. So YA, the R variable here, is taking all of the distance observations only for routes where the average fare is less than $200. And the YB variable will be a vector of all the distance observations for routes where the average fare was above $200. So you can run that code to create those variables. And then we just take the sample average, y bar, uh, for both samples. And then finally, we can compare the difference in the sample means. Uh, so we can see population A, the sample mean was 800 miles. Population B, the sample mean was 1,339 miles, so much longer. So in other words, the, the sample mean difference was 539 miles. So it's a pretty substantial mean difference. Uh, but of course, this is not suggesting that having a higher fare is causing the route to be longer. For example, if we had a route where currently the average fare was $100 and it was, let's say, 800 miles, this doesn't mean that if the airline decides to increase the fare to $300, suddenly the route can get longer by 500 miles. Uh, the route distance is just a fixed amount regardless of what the fare is. And in this case, probably the causality is in the opposite direction where longer routes means uh, it takes more jet fuel, so there's a higher variable cost and uh, the fare is higher to reflect that. Uh, so here there's correlation. There is some causal relationship, but it's not that uh, having a higher fare causes a greater distance. So here's another example with the data set named alcohol, also in the Wooldridge package. Um, so now population A is unmarried, population B is married. And then we're looking at age as our y variable. So I'll set those up and again compute the sample means. And now I'll do the same thing where we compute the, um, or excuse me, print out the sample means for ya and yb, and then also compute and print out the sample mean difference. So when I run that, we can see uh, the unmarried population, the average age was uh, about 34 years old. Population B, the married individual's average age is around 40 years old. 
So the mean difference is almost seven years. But again, this does not mean that if you go out and get married, it will suddenly cause you to age seven years, right? It's just describing the fact that uh, the married people happen to be older on average. It's not that getting married has a causal effect on age. Another example with yet another data set here. Um, this one is from an intro economics class. Uh, the y variable is the final exam score, which is out of 40 points if you read the help file for that data set. Um, and then there's a couple different uh, ways we could define population A and B. One, you could look at uh, how many classes a student attended. Was it less than 28 or more than 28? Uh, we can also look at um, what percent of the homeworks were turned in by the student. So we'll look at that one now. Um, so population A is going to be students who did not turn in all the homework. And then population B is students who turned in 100% of the homework. And again, we'll look at the uh, sample mean exam scores final exam scores for the two populations and look at the difference in final exam scores. And perhaps unsurprisingly, when we do that, we can see uh, the students who always turn in their homework have a, a little over one point uh, higher average final exam score. So does that mean if you're a student and you decide to turn in all your homeworks, that will cause you to do better on the final exam by one or two points? Possibly, that is a plausible explanation in this case, unlike the previous two completely silly examples. Um, it could be that doing homework sort of helps you uh, commit to studying throughout the semester and retain the information better. Um, we can also, though, look at this other variable. Instead of final exam score, what was your GPA prior to the semester when the data was collected? Um, so in this case, we'll do the same calculations, compute the different uh, sample means, and look at the difference. And what you'll see, there's still a positive difference here, a somewhat substantial difference, actually. The students who, in this semester, turned in all their homework in previous semesters had about a 0.3 higher GPA on average than the students who, this semester, did not turn in all their homeworks. So does that mean that attending class this semester sorry, turning in homework this semester causes your previous GPA to be higher? Now that is silly because it can't somehow travel back in time and affect your previous GPA that's already been decided. Uh, so that might sort of call into question whether it's actually turning in the homework that's causing these students to do better on the final exam or whether turning in the homework is just signaling a certain type of student who in past classes has also done better. Of course, another explanation is that the same students also turned in all their homework in previous classes, and so it is the homework having a causal effect. Um, all that to say, in this case, it's not clear whether or not it is the causation or not. Uh, one other silly example to end on with yet another data set. Uh, here we're defining the populations in terms of uh, we're looking at married couples and looking at whether the husband works 40 hours a week or less or whether the husband works more than 40 hours a week. So population A, the husband works 
40 or fewer hours, population B more than 40 hours. And then the uh, Y variable is whether the husband's wife is Hispanic or not. So that's a binary one zero variable. Um, and so the sample averages are just sample proportions in this case. So we can set that up and then look at the uh, sample mean difference between the working more and working less husbands. And you'll see there's this negative 0 0.04 difference. Um, so if you incorrectly interpreted the correlation as implying uh, causation, you would say, oh, working more causes somebody's wife to be 4% less Hispanic, four percentage points less Hispanic. But of course, that is uh, not physically possible, among other uh, reasons for being silly. So hopefully these were some helpful examples in thinking about why a correlation, or in this case, why a non-zero mean difference does not necessarily imply a particular causal relationship.